Prior to beginning the activity, please be sure to review the faculty information and disclosure statements, as well as the learning objectives. After listening to the activity, complete the post-test by clicking the Earn Credit link in the episode description. Downloadable slides and resources are also available. The following presentation is copyrighted by Medscape. No use, broadcast, or recording of this presentation or any part thereof is permitted without the written authorization of Medscape. The following presentation is part of a certified educational activity provided by Medscape Education and supported by an educational grant from Pfizer. This program is presented by Medscape Education Global. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session on uh, vaccine adjuvants, uh, labeling the playing field for older adults. My name is Stefania Maggi. I'm a geriatrician, a research director at the CNR Aging Branch based in Italy, in the city of Padua. And I have the pleasure to hold these sessions with Professor Ali Arandi, who is head of the Vaccine Evaluation Research Lab in the University of Gothenburg, Sweden and also is a visiting professor at the University of British Columbia in Canada. Dr. Randy, welcome there. Thank and you. Um, I will start uh, this session uh, um, that includes uh, uh, several uh, uh, sessions. Uh, the first uh, will deal with the changes in the immune system in older adults. And we will look to the impact of vaccine preventable diseases on the health of older adults. Then we will discuss about the impact of immunosenescence on vaccine efficacy and the impact of vaccination in older adults' health. We'll discuss in detail the role of adjuvants as a strategy to enhance vaccine efficacy and the adjuvants mode of uh, action, particularly with uh, Professor Ranti. And then at the end, uh, we will provide some examples of uh, adjuvants vaccines uh, that are uh, available and used for common uh, vaccine preventable diseases. So why are older adults more susceptible to infectious diseases? We know that uh, a very important factor affecting the immune response is immunosenescence, together with other factors such as malnutrition, anatomical physiological modification predisposing to infections, and comorbidity and disability. But immunosenescence in particular is the term that describes a natural age-related decline in immunity that occurs in older adults. And these affect both the innate immune systems that um, it leads to the inflammation, that is the background for all the major chronic diseases and leading to frailty and to disability. And also it affects the adaptive immune system with the dysfunction of T and B cells and therefore reducing the capacity to respond to new infections. And although we know that the major leading causes of death is among the older people are non-communicable diseases, we know that infectious diseases such as influenza, pneumonia, varicella, pertussis are associated with these chronic diseases. They can make them worsening and uh, uh, they can be a trigger to uh, future complications. So this is why the major uh, scientific societies uh, focusing on the health of older adults have recommended uh, the uh, vaccinations template and uh, boosters on uh, the older people that also reflects uh, what uh, we see in the national guidelines for most uh, European countries. So Dr. Harandi, would you tell us what are the different vaccines modality? The vaccine and modalities can be categorized in two categories. Um, 
category number one, vaccines that are um, developed using um, empirical approaches like live attenuated vaccines, inactivated vaccines, and, and detoxified vaccines. And the second category of uh, vaccine modalities is um, the ones made using the rational design of the vaccine. And that includes um, recombinant protein vaccines, virus-like particles, virosomes, um, glycoconjugate vaccines, and more recently, a live um, attenuated or live vector vaccines, as well as uh, DNA and um, RNA vaccines. So what about adjuvants and uh, what is their role in uh, vaccines, in particular for older uh, people? Uh, traditional vaccines or empirically made vaccines, they are um, including basically um, um, some kind of inherent um, immunostimulatory property, which is um, coming from the microbe associated molecules in the traditional vaccines. However, the um, recent vaccines, the novel vaccines, they do need adjuvant in order to compensate for the reduced immunogenicity of, uh, for example, highly purified antigens. And uh, this is an attempt to mimic natural infection uh, using um, modern vaccines. And we have seen from 30s uh, when the first vaccine adjuvant discovery has taken place that a large number of vaccines being developed um, using alum as um, the first adjuvant and also several other adjuvants have been recently developed that are part of um, human vaccines. Uh, I can also um, mention um, about um, the purpose of the adjuvant uh, and the definition of the vaccine adjuvant. Um, an immunologic adjuvant can be defined as um, uh, any substance that can help to um, accelerate, um, prolong, um, increase, or even change the antigen-specific immune response when used in combination with uh, vaccine antigen. Adjuvants can enhance the immune response of individuals for, who for reasons of um, um, age or it could be um, those with underlying medical conditions are not responding to uh, current vaccines to the same extent as um, healthy adults. So this is an attempt to basically also enhance immunogenicity of the vaccine in um, different um, target groups and the ones that are more, more susceptible to certain types of infection. There are some advantages um, associated with uh, the use of different vaccine adjuvants. Uh, number one, which is um, probably one of the most important one is um, the dose sparing effect that vaccine adjuvant has. And uh, this means that um, using vaccine adjuvant, we can use less antigen. And um, in case of, for example, epidemic or pandemic, we can increase uh, global vaccine supply. Uh, the other advantage of using vaccine adjuvant is um, reducing the number of um, immunization given to people uh, due to the fact that uh, vaccine adjuvant could basically enhance the immune response to vaccine antigens. And this way we can reduce the number of immunizations. We can also expect a rapid response to pathogens if you compare vaccine adjuvanted from with the one unadjuvanted, you see that the immune response is developed more quickly in the context of um, vaccine adjuvant. Um, we can also broaden the vaccine-induced um, immune response in individuals. And I have one example um, today that I can share with you. Uh, the other important matter, which is related to the topic of this program, is that um, vaccine adjuvant can also enhance immunogenicity of the vaccines in elderly people. In other words, um, uh, adjuvants can help overcoming immunosenescence and potentiate both innate and adaptive arms uh, of the immune response. And also uh, it can be help, helpful for um, development of therapeutic vaccines and also vaccines for viruses for which um, T cell response is um, critically important. And there are some um, vaccine adjuvants currently in use, um, uh, in use for human vaccines. That includes alum, which is um, aluminum salts. It comes in different forms, uh, and uh, it's part of several human vaccines. 
Uh, then we have MF59, which is um, an oil in water emulsion, is part of um, influenza vaccine. We have AFO3, which is very similar to MF59, is oil in water emulsion. Uh, CPG, which is um, an agonist of um, TOLAC receptor 9, one of the pattern recognition receptors on the surface of immune cells. And then we have adjuvant system. Um, the ones in practice for the moment is ASO1, um, which is um, basically TLR4 agonist, um, TOLAC receptor 4 agonist in combination with um, saponin or QS21 more specifically. Uh, formulated in liposome, and then we have ASO3, which is in uh, squalene um, uh, emulsion, um, including um, vitamin E, alpha tocopherol, and then ASO4, which is um, TOLAC receptor 4 agonist um, in alum adjuvant. So these are um, the ones currently included in um, human vaccines, but there are several adjuvants that are being tested in humans um, in different phases of the clinical trials, and the list is very long. Then uh, the question would be how adjuvants are helping um, uh, induction of immune response. And um, what we know, the current knowledge tells us that adjuvants have the propensity to potentiate both uh, innate and uh, adaptive arms of the uh, immune system. Um, within minutes after administration of vaccine containing adjuvant, we will see that um, there would be a local inflammatory response at the site of injection. And uh, within hours, we see immunocompetent cells recruited to the site of injection where they can um, pick up the antigen, in particular antigen presenting cells, dendritic cells. Dendritic cells um, migrate to the draining lymph node where they can educate T cell response and later on B cell response. And as a result, we will be having um, um, T cell response and um, antibody response um, elicited against um, the antigen of interest. So this is, um, uh, in brief, the mode of action of uh, vaccine adjuvants. Uh, and we know when uh, vaccine adjuvants are used, we would be expecting um, a higher magnitude and better quality of immune response. However, different vaccine adjuvants, they have um, different mode of action. And um, this ranges from um, activation of um, TOLAC receptors on or inside um, antigen presenting cells. They can also induce um, um, inflammasome, which is um, the upstream of um, inflammatory response. And they can also help um, potentiating antigen presenting cells in a sense that um, uh, adjuvants could enhance the property of antigen presenting cells in presenting antigen to the immune system through upregulation of um, HLA molecules and also um, induction of cytokine response. They help initiation and bridging innate and uh, adaptive arms of, um, of the immune system. Thank you very much. I think this is very useful for us to understand better the examples that we will now discuss about uh, adjuvanted vaccines. And let's start with uh, the vaccine for herpes zoster. We know just very briefly that the varicella zoster virus is a very highly contagious pathogen and it causes two distinct uh, uh, clinical syndrome, chickenpox uh, in children, and it's very common. And then the reactions or later on in life, particularly at older ages, it gives the uh, zoster, herpes zoster uh, problem, which is very painful, very difficult to treat. And uh, uh, after the first uh, approach encounter with uh, this uh, virus, our body develops uh, the uh, memory T cells and they provide immunity that might be boosted periodically by exposure to varicella or also to uh, uh, vaccine boosters. But the very 
important problems we know associated to this disease is also the complications. And there are terrible complications such as the ophthalmic uh, zoster or the more common, the most common complication is the postherpetic uh, neuralgia, which uh, uh, actually affect uh, very often older people is disabling and is very difficult to treat with drugs. So having a vaccine that can help decreasing the risk of herpes zoster in older individuals would be very important. So would, would you, Dr. Arandi, tell us about how the zoster vaccine works and its efficacy in older people? Uh, the new Zoster vaccine that we have is a recombinant protein, um, an adjuvant of recombinant protein. The traditional Zoster vaccine was based on live attenuated um, uh, varicella Zoster virus. And the new one, um, which is um, Zoster vaccine um, for elderly, uh, is um, having very good efficacy. So what it's comprised of is um, uh, one component of the virus, which is called glycoprotein E, is um, expressed on the surface of the varicella zoster virus. This protein is made recombinantly together with ASO1, which is um, basically um, liposome together with QS21 and MPL, which is a TLR4 um, agonist. So the combination of this adjuvant or adjuvant system seems to be um, highly functional in terms of induction of innate and adaptive immunity. What happens is that the combination of GE and ASO1, which is called um, Zoster vaccine, is given through the muscle and then following the injection would be local inflammatory response, recruiting immunocompetent cells to the site of injection. So what we are expecting is that um, herpes zoster vaccine is giving rise to a broad and also very strong and persistent immune response that um, includes um, polyfunctional effector and memory T cell is very important. Uh, and it can also overcome the complications of age and also and those who are um, basically suffering from some immunosuppression, this adjuvant seems to overcome this uh, immuno suppress the status which comes um, along with aging, immunosenescence. And when it comes to the efficacy and safety of herpes zoster vaccine, uh, so what, what we know now is that two doses of this recombinant glycoprotein E adjuvanted with ASO1 has the um, capacity of inducing um, over 97% efficacy in older people, and this uh, varies, but um, overall, even um, in people over the age of 70, the efficacy is close to 98%. It's a very effective vaccine. And in terms of safety and um, serious adverse events, the phase three clinical trials show that there is no difference between placebo and vaccine arms of, um, uh, of the trial. So the vaccine seems to be uh, relatively safe and um, the four years follow-up data and um, point to the fact that the vaccine is highly efficacious. So do we have other examples of uh, successful adjuvanted vaccines in older people? And the other example is influenza vaccine. It's not in elderly, it's in healthy adults. Um, uh, so the example is as following that when M59 um, adjuvanted influenza vaccine is used, and the observation was that um, the antibody repertoire to influenza antigen has enhanced dramatically. In other words, the number of epitopes involved in antibody response has dramatically enhanced when M59 um, vaccine adjuvant has been used. And the other thing that has been observed was um, the magnitude of the antibody response and also the quality of the antibody response affinity increased uh, when M59 adjuvant is used in conjunction with influenza antigen. So Dr. Randi, would you tell us uh, what are the future directions for uh, vaccine adjuvants? 
Uh, in my opinion, the future um, for um, vaccine adjuvants um, relies, relies on um, combination of adjuvants. Um, and the objective of combining different adjuvants is to tackle the immune system from different angles with the objective of enhancing both uh, the magnitude and also the quality of immune response elicited by, uh, by vaccine antigens. And there is a long list of uh, trials um, using different combination of vaccine adjuvants. But um, I think the bottom line is that um, um, use of combination of adjuvants would be a very efficient means through which we can induce um, potent and long lasting immunity. And uh, when it comes to the pandemic, um, we are witnessing that uh, one of the combination adjuvants called ASO3 is being tested as a pandemic adjuvant in clinical trials for and different COVID-19 vaccines, um, and the ones including the combinant proteins, the spike protein of the virus. So I think the future um, is for using um, combination of adjuvants for um, development of new vaccines. In conclusion, I believe that uh, we can say that as individuals grow older, an age-related decline in immunity occurs, and the vaccine-preventable diseases become more frequent and increase morbidity and mortality, both directly and through the triggering and the exacerbations of non-communicable diseases of older people. So vaccinations can improve adult health to a greater extent that, that attributable only to the prevention of the acute disease of the infectious uh, disease. But vaccination can play definitely a role in improving the healthy life expectancy of the older population and adjuvants is certainly one of the best strategy that can play a role in improving their efficacy. Thank you very much for uh, staying with us for this session. And I like to thank uh, uh, Professor Avandi for uh, his uh, presentations and his uh, clear details about adjuvants, uh, how they can uh, uh, work and how they can help us in improving the health of older adults. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Maggi. This program was presented by Medscape Education Global.